Between school, your friends, and social media, answers are everywhere. But where can you find the truth? Welcome to the Well Student Cast. We're asking for a friend so you don't have to. Welcome to the Well Student Cast. My name is Kae, and I'm here with my friend Bryn. What's up, guys? We're back asking a question for a friend so you don't have to. And today we have a very special guest. Yeah, we do. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, my name is Ben Carr, Whoa. and I'm from the Well Counseling Center, which works really closely with the Well Community Church, understandably. We have the same yes. name, so <laughs> it's probably good that we work together. It's, that's, that's true. That's awesome. That that's true. so cool. Yeah, like, so, Ben, like, what is, like, your favorite movie of, like, all time? Or maybe uh, recently, if it's recently. too it's too difficult to do mm-hmm. all time. Well, I know all time, because that's actually easier. It's, it's <laughs> But it's kind of a placeholder movie for most people, Yeah, and that's the original Star Wars. Oh, it's it's so one. basic. I know, I know good, I'm so basic, uh, but basic. it was a game changer. I love <laughs> It. And I, I love it so much that it's hard for me to accept the flaws that are undeniably in it when you watch it. But when I watch it and I see all the flaws for it, I just love it even more. It's just so. endearing Aww. to you. Yeah. That's really cool. It really is. That's I'm like, awesome. Thank you for being so beautifully imperfect, Star Wars. Thank Let's you for, go. Yeah. This is a sermon illustration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. I, let us know if you think the same way when you guys watch Star Wars. People might hate me. I have never watched Star Wars. Wait, what? Yeah. I yeah, know it's really? tough. It, people I, get really upset about this. I, I actually love talking to people who have never seen Star Wars. Perfect. Wow. They That's are, perfect. Here. They are best the friends. best because that means that you have something in the future to look forward to. Oh. Another sermon else. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bryn, so you need to look forward to watching Star Wars Absolutely. soon. Or be disappointed in it, which mm. happens too. And oh. that's totally fine. I'm yeah. not one of those Star Wars fans where I'm like, oh, you don't like Star Wars? I guess we can't talk about anything. So. <laughs> I have experienced those people. I oh, also yeah. have. Yeah, I think that's why tough. I get like intimidated by it. Yeah. Oh, we're the I'm worst. Like, oh, we're, if yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. people don't like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you. Are, yeah. It's a it's a personality <laughs> gauge, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Oh, no. Bryn, you're more than your movie things that you like watching. It's just becoming like a really yeah, therapeutic a, moment the, for the me. The hardest thing for me for Star Wars is that it starts with 4, 5, 6, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, or mm. 1, 2, 3, oh, yeah. 5, 7, 9. I don't know the numbers. Yeah, but. So there's already a bar for entry where they're like, are you worthy of this, right? Is that, yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. It's like, what an exclusive club exactly. Star Wars. Jeez, guys. <laughs> like we could have started episode one. We have to start <laughs> in yeah, the middle. Yeah. 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 Well, this is amazing. As much as we would want to talk about Star Wars this whole time, <laughs> Ben is actually here as more than just a Star Wars um, fan. Yeah, so, yeah, guru, right? So yeah, I would say. yeah. <laughs> um, but he is the director of the Well Counseling Center, and so um, my this is just like actually a fun or a personal question, I guess. Did you always know you wanted to do something with counseling? For a long time. Okay. For a long time. In fact. Um, I'm one of those people who, thank God, I feel very blessed because I hear people say, I have no idea what I want to do with my Mm. life. I have no idea what I want to do. I think it was on a TV show or a movie. I saw a therapist and I was like, what are they doing? Oh, they get to talk to people all day? That's great. (laughs) And they get to listen and learn things about people? Yeah. So for a long time, I thought, and that's helpful to people, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. It seems to be. That's so cool. Yeah. That was, I was just curious about that. That's awesome. Um, But I think this is such a timely episode. Um, I mean, just think of the past couple of years um, and how much we've seen students really wrestling with this topic of mental health. And so we just wanted to invite you on and kind of just open up the conversation of how do we navigate mental health um, in today's age? And so uh, Mm -hmm. Kaela had brought up a really good question earlier, and I think I'd love to just hear your thoughts on it. But how do we navigate? Like there are feelings of stress and then there's like, anxiety whereas Mm -hmm. also like there's feelings of sadness that are real and there's also depression like how do we navigate which one is which yeah um most therapists most therapists who are worth their salt i would say rely on a book that's called the diagnostic and statistical manual for mental disorders Mm -hmm. and so there's generalized anxiety disorder and there's major major depressive disorder and there's a lot of variants within that too and what that book says is what is generalized anxiety? Well, it's a pervasive pattern Mm -hmm. of nervous, anxious thoughts and worries. What is major depressive disorder? It's a pervasive pattern of low mood, low Mm -hmm. self-esteem, lack of motivation. So we all feel those symptoms that are being described. Mm -hmm. We all have at some point in our lives. Mm -hmm. The reason it becomes diagnosable is when someone's like, this has such dominance over my life that it's more of a matter of my feeling it more often than not. Or it, or when I feel it, it's so intensive and it's so dominating on my behavior that I can't function in the way that I subjectively would like to. So there's mm-hmm. even a subjective component to mm-hmm. the personal experience. This bothers me that it has such dominance in my life because I don't want it to. That's what makes it diagnosable. And that's very different from, oh, I'm sad today, or oh, I'm nervous because I have this test going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
for students, uh, like their timelines are often like really short. So it's mm-hmm. like like today is today and tomorrow is not tomorrow just yet. And so if like for them, like sadness that experiences for a long period of time could really just be a week or sometimes two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so for like, I guess for our listeners out there, like how do we know that like, oh, like this is something I should probably, it's not just a like circumstantial like experience where it's like, oh, like maybe in the next month I might feel better. But for them, they might feel like, well, if I've been sad for the next, for these past two weeks, I'm probably going to be sad for like the whole year. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you're, you're almost partially answering it yourself by being aware that even though there's this intensive moment where I'm feeling this and it feels genuinely like I'm going to feel this forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even for adults, I think a lot of young people don't realize that adults can feel that way too. We Mm -hmm. can feel a sense of like, oh my gosh, this is misery or oh my gosh, this is so nerve wracking. And when we feel something intensely enough, it becomes what feels like our eternity. Yeah. But like you described, something that we try and develop in adulthood and something that young people can be encouraged. And I really want to emphasize encourage, not kind Mm -hmm. of like given this this brow beating, mm-hmm. right? Of mm-hmm. like, well, no, you guys just need to rush through the program yeah, no, and get to no, a good place no, because we I'm enjoy like, the process. Your, your feelings make me uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Can you hurry this up, please, right? But, yeah. but more a matter of helping them realize, hey, there is a tomorrow and mm-hmm. you could feel differently, yeah. right? And I, I would go so far as to say, if you were to ask me to concisely define what depression tends to feel like yeah. is not only am I sad today, but I was sad yesterday mm-hmm. and I have no expectation other than that I'm going to be sad tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. And I don't think enough young people are actually asked, how do you think tomorrow looks? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they're, they're so focused on the sadness now, mm-hmm. which makes sense, but they're not really often being asked, do you have any sense of whether or not you'll feel different in the future? Yeah. Because that'll help me evaluate whether or not I would consider you to be depressed, mm-hmm. right? There's a hope component to it with yeah. depression or a lack thereof. Yeah, 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 that's true. And then what about like, we're, we kind of focus on sadness, the pervasiveness of like stress. We live in like a high demanding culture uh, today. So like there's a lot expected from our students. Uh, social media expects a lot of them. There's just a high stress. Yeah. And so like, I don't necessarily, yeah, I don't necessarily blame our students being like, I feel like I have high anxiety right now, but mm-hmm. more necessarily, like, how do we know what's like just natural stress that we're supposed to have like to do versus being like, oh no, like this is actually just like, I am not in control of myself anymore. Or, like mm-hmm. I can't control the thoughts. Does that make sense? Like we're trying to help them distinguish like. I think so. I think, well, when, when we look at young people, we tend to believe something about them that they're learning to believe in themselves, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is that they can manage those stressful things, right? I, I am not the authority on being able to determine what is the amount of stress that someone can successfully manage mm-hmm. or not. But I do have some general guidelines of what I think would be helpful for me to manage in terms mm-hmm. of what the day faces. Do I have what it takes to handle school? Do mm-hmm. I have what it takes to handle social interaction? Do I have what it takes to get up every morning, get out of bed, and um, go to work, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Those things. Those are things that culturally we've all decided those are things that the average person hopefully should be able to manage. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think – as young people are growing up, they're realizing, well, hey, I have some questions about whether or not culture is perfect because they realize it's mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. But that also doesn't mean that it's not helpful to us in, in terms of giving us a general guideline of, but what are the things that we can expect based off of what we see other people doing? Yeah. If other people are able to accomplish this, my hope would be that I am an equal of those mm-hmm. around me and that I and I could more or less accomplish, if not identical, probably not identical, but <laughs> similar things yeah, yeah, yeah. to what people are doing. That probably means that I'm on track with where I need to be. And if I'm not feeling those things, if, if there are things that people seem to be able to take for granted that's really easy for them and I really struggle with it, I think a lot of young people are like, well, then that must mean that I have this disorder that prevents me from being able to mm-hmm. do it. So I'm going to abstain from the race. I'm going to abstain from waking up. I'm going to abstain from doing these things. And I usually think that that belief is a symptom of something relatively depressive of like, yeah. oh, well, I'm giving up because there's no hope. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And depression is not a thing that we place on people to tell them, you know what? You're right. You shouldn't run the race. Mm-hmm. You should never expect to be able to, ru- to, to get mm-hmm. up out of bed every day. You should never expect to to face these challenges because you know what? You're depressed, so you can't do these things. That's not what depression is about. It's about you're challenged in overcoming these things. So what that probably means is you need support and encouragement to help identify the things about you that are strong and help illuminate the things about you that are capable Mm -hmm. and being gentle and gracious in the reality that maybe 
the reason it's hard is not because of something about you mm -hmm. and maybe it's because it's hard. Yeah. So what can we do to help you feel strong enough to not associate success with how many failures it takes to get along the way? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's so good. Yeah. Damn. Something that I know that I've talked through with students and even something I felt in my own life um, is like people will throw out like, um, I don't know, there's like Philippians 4, 6. That's like, do not be anxious. And um, what would you say to a student asking, like, is my anxiety or is my depression a sin? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I would, this is such a therapist answer. Are you ready? <laughs> I would, I would be very curious about what they think sin is mm -hmm. because they probably have an implicit, they, in, in fact, if for most people, when I ask that question, including to myself, <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm not sure. It's, it's kind of like, I know it when I'm committing sin, because I feel guilty, um, but I, I have a hard time sometimes being able to clearly define sin in a dictionary kind of sense. Um, but let's take a risk and say it's disobedience to God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, somehow it's, it's going against God's will. And my understanding, I'm not a theologian, but my understanding is that you can sin intentionally and you can sin unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And it's that latter part that I think is what makes the question, well, is anxiety or depression a sin, yeah. right? Is this, because this feels like something that isn't giving glory to God. It, it's characterized by a sense of misery or sadness or just being upset. And God does not reflect those things, right? That's the thing that I would confront. Everything that we feel mm -hmm. is something that God has given to us to experience. I don't think feeling anxious, I don't think feeling sad, I don't even think being in a state of depression is something that I would attribute and blame as someone's failure mm -hmm. to bring glory to God. I don't think it is an intentional defiance of what God has planned in their life. It's a challenge that that person is facing in connecting with that but that's yeah. very different from sin that's very different from rejecting it outright in fact i would go so far as to say the reason people are distressed by anxiety and sin or, or anxiety and depression is because they don't want to feel it mm -hmm. right so it's like i, I want to gear myself towards feeling what god allegedly i've been told what god has for me but i'm having a hard time getting there and that's distressing to me how can that be sin if they're like i want to get closer to god <laughs> and, I, and i'm so aware that i'm not there yeah. that i feel trapped mm -hmm. right yeah i think oft, i think on, honestly it's probably more just the fault of like the human brokenness like mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. people's yes. anxiety and depression makes us feel uncomfortable so then we say half truths mm -hmm. um and then that then we then be like okay i feel better about myself and I feel better that I've helped you. <laughs> and then really I've done more damage and I've made you self like second guess, like, oh shoot, like if I'm supposed to have joy mm. because that's what the Lord gives and I was just like experience that abundantly and I'm supposed to be delighted in and all these things, but I'm not, mm. then the only place that it like only place those things can happen is blame, mm -hmm. either yes. inwardly or outwardly. Yeah. I'm gonna blame my circumstances or I'm gonna blame myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think that's like where I guess like the disconnect is right as far as like our students being like oh gosh like then something's wrong with me therefore it must or I'm being disobedient like because like sometimes I feel like people have said you oh, just because you don't have enough faith mm -hmm. yeah yeah like, we should, hear that a lot you should believe more you know mm -hmm. or you're not trusting in God so then ultimately then it thinks well then that's a problem to me it makes yeah. me wonder if those people have ever cracked open lamentation right <laughs> well, that's what I'm yeah. right yeah. <laughs> it's like I mean clearly that's something that that God accounted for enough to where he's like yeah this gets to be in the book too right yeah right? yeah, yeah. Well, or trusting that. God is, I think with the, um, for at least for my own experience, um, when I just try to be like, oh, I don't feel this anxiety, um, or I don't feel this like pain or anything like that, that is almost more of me, like not trusting that the Lord's big enough mm -hmm. to handle those things. Whereas now I feel like it's like, okay, Lord, I am really anxious over like this potential situation happening or that I feel like I don't have any control over yeah. this. Um, and trusting, we mentioned the Philippians 4, 6 verse um, and like hearing that tone of like, do not be anxious, not as a like, like hammer mm -hmm. coming down on you, but as this invitation to bring him into those things with us. Yeah. I think sometimes he even allows us to feel those things because he wants us to draw closer to him, recognizing that at the end of ourselves, mm -hmm. like he is there too. He's there with us. 
And I think sometimes we're so focused on like, oh, there's something wrong with me or my emotions are big or no one really cares or any of those things that we forget to recognize that God actually is still st- like he's standing in the fire. With, yeah. You know, like his character is consistent over time with God's the mm-hmm. same yesterday, today and forevermore. Then how he showed up for people in biblical times is how he's still going to show up today. Yeah. And so like there's hope in that. But then I think sometimes we just get so lost <laughs> in how big our feelings are. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yes. And that that awareness that we get lost in it is part of what I want to get back to with what you yeah. described about when you're anxious and that kind of that that perception you have of defeat. Mm-hmm. What I really like to explore with people when they recognize that they're feeling anxious and they have this concern when they read that scripture and they're like, oh, but mm-hmm. I'm feeling this, but I'm not supposed to feel this. So I'm judging myself. <laughs> mm. Let me ask you this. When you feel anxious, what do you believe about yourself? Mm. Yeah, that I'm supposed to try and fix it. Yes. Yeah, I think for me, I, d- I deal a lot with that. Like if I feel anxious, I feel like I'm failing. Like yes. I'm not. Yes. I'm not in control enough of even my own feelings to get through something. So isn't God telling you, I don't want you to feel that way. Mm-hmm. That's what he's saying mm-hmm. in that verse. He's mm-hmm. saying, don't feel that way about yourself. <laughs> That's not true. That's not who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what he's saying. That's the depth that I think we have a hard time really embracing and experiencing in scripture when we just read it on the page and we're like, oh, don't be anxious. Okay, <laughs> check, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, I was, I, I said this earlier when we were talking, but like, I think we often even forget that like, you know, Philippians 4, 6 says like, right, uh, it says, don't be, do not be anxious about anything. But literally the three words before it says, the Lord is at hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, if God is there or he is moving, uh, then we have the permission, mm-hmm. right? That we don't have to be anxious. Which yes. I think is what we're trying to communicate, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, and and that he's. It's not that he hates that you f- that you feel that way. Yeah. It's that he wants you to feel like he's there with you mm-hmm. to help you feel less that way. Yeah, right. Yeah, and understanding yeah. God's heart for His people, His creation, I think, like, points to that mm-hmm. <laughs> all throughout Scripture. Yeah. Like, His heart for us is to be with us, mm-hmm. and yes. so uh, why would this be? Anything. different yeah. than all the other times we see throughout yeah, scripture. Yeah. It's so weird. Anxiety and depression are just like those big feelings often isolate us mm-hmm. yes. because we think it's just us that are experiencing these things. Yeah. hundred percent. Or we get overexposed to a broad concept and then it loses meaning for us and we don't really get to bask in the comfort of what those words really mean. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well, God loves you. God loves you. <laughs> Maybe he likes you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, God so. likes you if you're God listening. God likes you. Yeah. Um, he like likes you. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, okay, Ben, just like shifting gears a little bit, if one of our listeners is listening to this and they're like, okay, yeah, like I, I hear you guys, I've identified that I wrestle with these things, what would you say is like some next steps? Like, how, what are some tools for a student? Um, to walk this process out with their mental health in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, uh, we were were talking earlier and you had mentioned how unhelpful it is to just be like, well, just stop feeling that way, (laughs) right? Like stop feeling that way. So it's kind of like, don't think about pink elephants. Oh shoot, now I'm doing this very thing. (laughs) Oh my gosh, they just popped in. I literally was thinking pink elephants. Yeah, yeah, it's like, well now now that's where I'm at and I'm (laughs) stuck in this. And anxiousness, um, the thing that I think people have a hard time recognizing about anxiety is it is a preoccupation or a worry that is like magnetic. It draws us to pay attention to itself in order to anticipate bad things potentially mm-hmm. happening. It's like mm-hmm. a safety and thing. Yeah, it's a safety thing. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm using this because it's hard for me to imagine that I'll be prepared mm. unless I pay mental attention to this thing that I hate feeling <laughs> at the same time, but it's what I feel I have to pay attention to in order to be safe. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, one of the big coping things that helps us recalibrate where we direct our, our mental attention, it's gonna it's kind of showing the magic trick as it's being mm-hmm. described, but I trust people with this. Mm-hmm. I think, hey, it's okay if you know how the magic trick works because I want you to be able to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of can you pull yourself out enough through the distraction of paying attention to something else like your body or what you're sensing mm. because even though you're so focused and you're so hyper aware, you are actually being distracted from other things in your reality when you're anxious too. And so if you're able to hone in on, okay, what am, what is my breathing doing? Mm. What am I smelling? What am I tasting? I'm, I'm 
in some ways initially distracting myself Mm -hmm. from the worry that I'm having. And I'm actually paying more attention to myself, even though part of my anxiousness was I felt I was doing nothing but paying attention to myself and how -hmm. how terrible I felt. But now I'm paying attention to specific things. And you know what I'm doing when I'm doing that? I'm gaining control of where my thoughts are going. Mm -hmm. I'm actually diving deeper into paying attention to myself and I'm able to choose what I'm focusing on okay, now that I'm focusing on my breathing, now that I'm focusing on what I'm smelling, tasting, touching, Mm -hmm. seeing, hearing, Mm -hmm. now I can begin to ask myself, okay, now that I have a little bit more awareness of myself and I'm able to dictate the awareness I have in myself, I'm able to slow down a little Mm -hmm. bit and ask myself, okay, what is this situation? And I Mm -hmm. I can even be honest with myself in acknowledging it is a tough situation and I don't like it, Mm -hmm. but I'm still here. And then I can begin to ask the questions of who helps me in this, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And and maybe as Christians, we can we can kind of hit the God button really quick of like who's help, who's with me in this? God is mm. great. What has God put in your life to help you with this particular situation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meaning, who has God placed in your life? What skills has God placed in your life? And even now that you know what it is that you're facing and you're able to pay attention to yourself in a healthy way, right? You're able to have a certain control over yourself and you're able to have a certain mindfulness of what may be there. Okay, there's also a possibility that maybe things aren't there that you would like there to be. But you can begin to ask yourself, so even if those things aren't there for me Mm -hmm. and this thing is facing me that I'm nervous about, like potential rejection, failure of a test, something Mm -hmm. like that, now I can at least go in with a mind of imagining, okay, what is the outcome of that? I'm past the worry. Now I can actually think about this and it's still something I don't like, but I can ask myself, what would that mean if I failed this class or mm-hmm. if I failed this test or if this person broke up with me? And you can even go in, you can heighten the worry, but you've given yourself the time to kind of calm down and be present with it. And then you can ask yourself, if that thing happens, I probably would feel sad I'd probably Mm -hmm. be upset and I would feel those things today. And that would be pretty devastating. Who would I want to help walk me through this? Mm -hmm. Who, who would I, what kind of words of encouragement have people told me before? Mm -hmm. Right. If, if there's no one present now, or if there's no one present in your life now and a friend of mine was going through this, what would I want my friend to know about this? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What words of encouragement, what like this doesn't define you. Mm-hmm. This isn't the only thing that your life is made up of, right? I think the anxiousness is we come into contact with a scenario and that scenario and how we respond to it is what we use to check in with ourselves of, well, who am I in this situation, mm-hmm. right? And in the same way that Ka'o, you brought up uh, young people and I would argue adults a lot of the time too, we get caught in that immediate moment of, okay, this is the only thing that really matters because it's the only thing I'm able to pay attention to. There's also going to be a tomorrow where that thing might not necessarily be as important then yeah. as it is today. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to confess, I, I think that all the time. I love my job so much that, of course, I worry about losing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's this thought of what would happen if I was to lose my job? Oh, it'd be devastating. I would, I, I would not like that to say the mm-hmm. least. Um, I might even use a strong word and say I would hate that because <laughs> I sure. love my job yeah. so much. Right. And, I think, okay, would my would I disappoint my wife? Mm-hmm. Um, would she look at me differently if I lost my job? Would she consider me to be a failure? And it's almost in allowing myself to contemplate those possibilities that I'm given the space to ask myself, well, no, what has my wife told me what she values about me? Is it because mm-hmm. I go to work every day? No. In fact, in some ways she misses me in <laughs> some instances. <laughs> yeah. So clearly that's not the only thing that matters about me. Is this the favorite thing that I could have done in my job? Probably could I find resources that even though it would be very difficult and I wish I wouldn't have to, could I find myself finding an alternative? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably, yeah. right? What do I have that are skills that I, if I don't have them now, that I could build up? And it's even okay to have doubts about, well, I don't even know if I have what it takes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But do I have people in my life who have given me the, the, the safety and the encouragement that you have what it takes to try? That's what matters. You have what it takes to try. And we're here for you, not just when things go well, Mm -hmm. but we're here for you when things go poorly too. And, And the encouragement I would want young people to know is 
it can be very discouraging if other people are uncomfortable with your mm. discomfort. Yeah. So we're all going to do what we can. I can't speak on behalf of adults everywhere, but I can encourage them mm -hmm. that we are going to try and do our best to be mindful when we are thinking about this of figuring out how to manage our own distress mm -hmm. in order to not have it get in the way of being compassionate to you. That's so good. That is really good. It's so good. <laughs> I'm trying to cry. I know. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I thought mm -hmm. all of that was so good. And if you're listening, I hope that you feel encouraged and like feel like there's some uh, tangible tools to kind of like walk out your own mental health journey. And I think my encouragement for you would be like, um, if you're struggling with mental health, I know in my own experience that can be such like, it feels like a shameful thing. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to bring this up or like uh, we talked about earlier, just that am I failing in my own feelings and things like that. But I think as we open that circle up, like with Ben talked about, um, like the Lord has placed people in your life or things around you uh, to help you. And so I know for me, when I've opened that circle up, it's helped a lot to kind of combat that shame. But do you guys have any last thoughts or encouragements? Yeah, I would just say if you're listening, I'm really like stuck on the fact of you can try, mm -hmm. like you can try, and uh, like like I would almost just like encourage you to just take the next step, and trusting the fact that you're okay, like you are definitely okay, and um, and so that's where I, where I would leave my encouragement for people who are listening is, uh, yeah, like in this next minute you can try, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and and there are people out there who are who are willing to not evaluate your worth based off of your succeeding at trying. Mm -hmm. They're just proud yeah. that you tried. Yeah. They're it's proud so good. that you tried. Yeah. It's so good. Well, Ben, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. I think this was such an important conversation to have. Um, and if, yeah, if you're listening, I hope you feel encouraged and, we are excited to catch you next time on the Well Student. Yeah, abs yeah, absolutely. If you do have any more questions about mental health, or you're like, hey, like this, like really wanted me to be like, hey, I want to go ahead and say some of this stuff, mm -hmm. um, or bring more people into the loop on these things. Um, yeah, reach out. Let us know. We have a lot of resources that we love to continue a to walk with you. And um, yeah, and kind of like Bryn said, we're out, fam. So we'll <laughs> see you guys on our next episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Well Student Cast. As always, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about us. For more information about the Well Student Ministries, visit thewellcommunities.org/students. 